Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good good hump day. <laughs> good um, therapy time. Wow, stuff is going down. <laughs> it's crazy. But I'm happy. But at the same time, I feel, wow, just a little overwhelmed by what we're going to talk about today and uh, everything that's happening right now in the transgender medical space. So before we get into all of that stuff, I want to say thank you all so much for joining me today. And um, it's going to be a heavy conversation. I just want you all to know. So I, I hope everybody's prepared for it. Uh, number one, number two, hey, show me where you're from so I can give you a shout out. And then we can see all the people that come here every week for therapy session. <laughs> I totally look forward to these days. I know I say it every time, but I actually do. I actually love the time I get to spend with you. And I love the fact that we are all creating such an awesome community. And oh, you're going to let, okay, first let me do that. And I'm going to tell you something else. Okay, Arkansas, New Zealand's in the house, right on. Missouri's in the house, Poland, Ar oh, what else? Gibraltar, right on, you guys. Houston, you're awesome. Missouri, uh, Nebraska, New Jersey, uh, Ohio, Ohio, New Hampshire, Georgia, Germany, New York, ready, right on Missouri. Got us some couple of Missouris, England, Gridley, California. I have no idea where that is. Virginia, Sweden is in the house, uh, England, the UK, Switzerland. Wow, you guys, you're so amazing. Virginia's in the house. East Texas is in the house. Watching from North Carolina, from Bing Bingham, Bingham, New York is in the house, Arizona. Sorry, my eyes. So I want to tell you that I got my eyes checked. Colorado's in the house. And another Poland is in the house. Thank you, friends. Wales is in the house. Right on, friends. I have a good friend from Wales. Australia's in the house. Love you all. Appalachia's in the house. East Tennessee. Turf Island is in the house. <laughs> you know, the turfs are welcome here. You all know that. I, I, I don't believe in that nonsense. It's ridiculous. No, they're not new glasses yet. I just got my eyes checked, but I'm getting new glasses. So these are still making me squint a little bit. But Chile's in the house. Tennessee's in the house. Arizona's in the house. Canada's in the house. We need you here. Stanford, Connecticut's in the house. Right on. And Seth is in the house. And so is Vicky, the resident lesbian, is in the house. Right on, everybody. I love you all so much. Thank you so much. Oregon's in the house. Oregon does need to be here. So um, what is that? Bremington, Washington is in the house. Washington also needs to be here and more Oregon. So <laughs> San Francisco really needs to be here. You know, I don't know what happened in San Francisco. I'm sorry, but Adelaide, y'all know I have a sculpture at the Adelaide Museum of Art. So if you're in Adelaide, please go check it out. It's actually in the section of the classical art section, and they bought it as a permanent piece. You see that guy up there behind me? That's actually a, a sculpture of me, uh, tiny, but the actual original sculpture by Mark Quinn is a life-size sculpture that sits in the Adelaide Museum of Art. And I think you you all enjoy it. And I get a lot of people from all around the world taking pictures with me and sending them to me. So it's really great. So again, 100% uh, Seth, we reached 100K. Can't do it without you. So by liking and subscribing to this channel, you're just creating a better space for all of us. And as you know, I like to share everything with you all and it means a lot to me that you listen to what we're all talking about here in Amsterdam's in the house so with that today <clears throat> I don't know how many pardon me I don't know how many of you West Virginia my mom's from West Virginia so I don't know how many of you are um are understanding uh oh, Braxton's in the house I my last video is with Braxton you all know Braxton he's a he's he's a great kid too I'm surrounding myself by all these young awesome trans guys who have focus who have careers ahead of them who are not going to be whiny little brats <laughs> they're going to be totally awesome guys who are doing stuff in the world and that's what I'm talking about so um some really and crazy, crazy news came out. And I think you're all here so we can have this conversation that, you know, I think it's something we've all been fighting for. We've all been fighting for the truth and honesty to come out of this so-called community. Uh, it's not a community anymore, but what's coming out of the community is toxic 100%. It is negative. It is lies. It is deceitful. It has nothing to do with transition. It has, hey, North Dakota and Alberta's in the house. Right on. Thank you so much, friends. And thank you again for, for the 100, for the well wishes on the 100K. I can't believe we reached it. It's, it's just been incredible. So that being said, the W path, um, 
situation that's happening, right? I guess they're calling it the WPATH files. Has Have any of you by any chance, hey, Susie from Santa Cruz, have any of you by chance had a chance to read what's going on? Are you looking to see what's going on? I'm wondering, we got new members in the house too. Thank you so much, friend. Appreciate you so much. Appreciate you so much. Right on. Oh man, can't do it without you all. It's so fantastic. Um, must love horror films. I do actually <laughs> love horror films. Did you hear that? They passed a bill in San Francisco today to fund the police and give them more power. No. Yes. <laughs> Did you all know that? I didn't know that. So thanks for bringing that to our attention. This is important. Remember that whole nonsense, defund the police? What? What? That has got to be the most insane thing I've ever heard of. How can you even talk about defunding? Now, we know there's problems everywhere. My sister, by the way, was a police officer for 30 years. So I'm connected to that. It is not an easy job. Now, that being said, I do believe there's corruption in all parts of government. There's corruption. But people got to respect police a little bit more and understand the job they do. And I'm telling you, I have a total connection to it, is not an easy job. OK, it is a horrible job. The things you get called to, the things you see. My sister deals with a lot of PTSD. She was one of the first female police officers on the police force out here in Los Angeles. And she and it was not easy for my sister to join the police force. They did not want her on the police. They don't want women on the police force back in the day. Hey, friend, thanks for joining us. They didn't. So they pushed against my sister a lot. And, the, and the, it was a very old school man's club, if that makes sense, right? So she would, they, they would just do nasty things to her. One of the things that they would do to her was she would get a call to go to a specific thing and then she would call for backup and they wouldn't back her up they wouldn't they her backup wouldn't show up for a little while just to mess with her stuff like that you know it's horrible it's actually hey gardney thanks so much so i want you to understand also i've been around a, a long time and i've seen how women's rights have you know progressed and how much women have fought to get into spaces and it's why i will not i will not shut up about trans women or women nonsense i will not shut up about trans women infiltrating women's spaces as if it's a completely fair thing i don't trans women could become a police officer a fireman a firewoman whatever they want to do but when it comes to a competition or spaces that are made specifically for the safety of women, if we didn't want safety for women, there would not be a male and a female toilet. It is really what I believe. It would not, not be. There's a reason there's a male and female toilet. We all know why. I've used both, by the way. Women need a space to be very safe. There are freaky dudes out there. And now we got freaky dudes dressing like women, pretending they're trans and infiltrating women's faces. Push back on me all you want. My eyes don't lie. Okay. And my brain is not on drugs. So I see everything. And you can tell me I'm transphobic. You can call me a turf, but women 100% need their space. Now, if women are going to say, cool, dude, you can join us at the table. You look like a lady. Look, let's use Tori. My last uh, interview I just did with uh, our, uh, I think, a reaction with Tori. You all know Tori. You would never know Tori used to be, or she is a dude, but you know what I mean? Lived as a dude. You would never know it. I don't think any woman in this room would object. If you do, please put up here. If you would object to Tori walking in the women's room to take a pee pee, would you be okay with that or not? I, I really want to know if there's any per oh, thumbs up. You're cool with it. Thumbs down. You're not cool with it. L let me see what's up there. And I'm, and I'm going to show you my point here, which I, you probably all probably know. Hi, Cecilia. Thank you, my friend for joining me. Woman had to fight. And I guess what, Cecilia, I was part of that. I was part of that fight. I, I, I lived as a woman for a lot of my life and a gay butch woman. You all seen pictures of me. I live for that. I, I helped to get to the, those spaces along. A, a lot of us did. So no, 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 no. I'm not going to backtrack on that. It was a lot of work to get to a space where women have their own space. And now all of a sudden, trans women. So I see most of you are all about it. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. 
That means a lot to me. And let me tell you something about Tori, who's a very good friend of mine. She would never infiltrate a space she wasn't welcome in. And le let me also, to all the people out there who are not trans, okay, to all the non-trans people, let me tell you something. We're very self-aware. So don't let those people fool you. They're very, very self-aware. Do, do I have a thumbs down? Do I have a thumbs down, um, Seth? I, I don't see any, which is really fantastic for me to see that you're all welcoming of Tori. Tori is going to just love this. Now we made the point. We made the point. If all the women here are saying, if you make the, if you make the effort and you walk in and you don't cause problems and you just go pee pee or poo poo and you walk out of the restroom like everyone else, no one has an issue with it, but that's not what's happening. And we need to call these freaks out. They're horrible. So that being said, transsexual people will never forget who they are ever. I know where I come from. I never forget it. It doesn't go away. And I don't want you to be uncomfortable. So that being said, the trans women like Tori do not want you to be uncomfortable. They want you to accept them. They want to look like a woman. They want to walk the world as a woman. They don't want you to have any weird stuff with them. That's the point you all need to know. And I think you do. It's why Tori is welcome in your space. And it's why the trans community doesn't like people like Tori. Because now they have this new idea that passing, passing is not trans and anyone can just do this. Well, then you're going to suffer. If you're a trans person who's not putting the work into looking like a man or woman, it's your fault. You're going to suffer. You're not going to get invited to the, to the party. You're going to cry all day long. You're not going to be a, uh, 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 you're not going to be a successful human. You're going to just live in your victimy crap and, and you're going to blame it on the world. That's, that's just how it works. Oh, thanks for being a member, friend. Appreciate that so much. So, you know, I'm always going to call it out. I, 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 I have no allegiance. I want you all, before I move forward to the W path files, I have no allegiance to a community that is toxic. Why would I have allegiance to that? They don't do anything for me. And in fact, they make my life more difficult. I prefer to be in a community with you guys. I prefer to be a, around a community that likes to have conversation that is willing to say, oh, fuck, I don't agree with that but I still think you're okay and we can still have the conversation. They're fake. They're 100% fake, Sue. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Now, that leads us into today, okay? I did a lot of, yeah, we're creating a new community. I, I, I did a lot, I did some research, okay? Because I didn't want to come on this today kind of half ass if that makes sense. And I really wanted to make a, a great conversation around this because I'm not sure if you all, probably aren't so deep into the trans stuff and you shouldn't be because it's actually nasty. But that being said, uh, you all pretty much understand what's happening in the trans space. And it's been hijacked by a bunch of activists. It's been hijacked by people who are pushing lies and deceit. It's been hijacked by big pharma. It's been hijacked by some weirdos in the medical space. It's been hijacked on so many levels. And so here we sit today why I, one of the reasons I started this channel, number one, number two, also here we sit today with men, okay, men, and I'm saying it, who are not trans, they're cross-dressers and fetishists and weirdos and p the P people who've infiltrated the trans community and pretending they're trans. And this, this is the hugest thing that has destroyed our community. Plus the number one thing for me, I'm sorry, ladies, but more important for me are the kids, okay? The kids above and beyond any other thing are the most important thing for me and why I sit in this chair and why I speak out against a community that I used to be a part of and that I refuse to be a part of. So you need to understand where I'm coming from, okay? I'm coming from a space of I care not only about myself and my own transition and how much it helped me become a better person. I stand with the young generation of trans men like Braxton and Seth and Marcus and all the guys who are literally like me who just want to live their lives. OK, but what we and I'm including these guys because we all are on the same. We will not tolerate children being put into a space that is no way near. OK. Now, with that, all of a sudden, we have this organization called WPATH, right? Now, WPATH has been around for a long time. I, I think it first started at the Harry Benjamin Standards, and that was kind of like a loosey-goosey group that we had back 30 years ago. And then from that, it became WPATH, okay, which is the World uh, Psychological Association of Transgender Health, okay? Or, uh, and you have to understand, this has been the sort of 
the crux of the new trans space. But the other thing you have to understand is this. WPATH is a self-appointed organization. Remember this. Very important. It's a self-appointed organization. So they're grabbing the people they want to be on the board of directors, the medical, all of it. Did they ask me? Never would they ask me. That should be a first clue right there. Have they asked a lot of other elders? That should be a first clue for you right there. It's literally run by people who have been chosen to push the agenda of what? Transitioning children, trans women or women, biology doesn't matter. Everything they're doing is safe and effective. And we all knew it's BS, total BS. Yeah, I'm sorry, they're professional. You're right. I, I couldn't remember because I'm so over them. <laughs> Thank you for, for clarifying that, Karina. Here, there we go. Thank you, Karina. Oh, do you all know Karina? She's amazing. One, one, just a beautiful, amazing human. If you don't know who she is, I think she has a channel on here. She also has a podcast and she's a really powerful, powerful human being. So so really, thank you for that. I appreciate that. So so there that we have that. I just want to give you that setup there, Okay. So we have an um, we have whistleblowers who came forward and started spitting facts, right? Because nobody would listen to us all. There were many of us who were screaming, "Wait a minute here! You can't do this to kids. Are you insane?" Then they started throwing out lies and deceit and, and irresponsibility on so many levels. W path, right? And I always said, "Who are these people?" How come they get to have the voice, right? How come you're not talking to people who transitioned 30, 40 years ago and can tell you the actual dangers? Karina being one of those people, the dangers, the deceit, all of it. So finally, we started getting whistleblowers. Jamie Reed being, I, I'm not sure if Jamie was the first, but she was one of the first and she blew the lid right open. But the one thing I want you to understand is we're also fighting against the media. And we do have a left and right media, scary to say. In a democracy, in a, in a country supposed to be a, a democracy, we don't. We have we have media that split. So I want to know, have any of you seen the sort of left or sort of liberal media? Have you seen them talk about the W path files? Have any of you seen that? Because I haven't. I haven't. I have never, I haven't seen it yet, which is kind of scary. So they're not even talking about it yet. This is huge news. So the, I put a link in the description of this live so that you can actually go to the, to the website of the WPATH files. Okay. But the first thing I want to bring up here right now is I really want to bring up a I, I saved a bunch of things from, um, 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 YouTube and internet and some of the video stuff that's going to going to sort of spell it out for you if, if you don't, okay, if you don't understand what's going on. Basically, what happened was some leaked information got to a very important journalist, okay, and he created something with another person who did the research on it. And because of that, we now have information that has been missing. And we all knew this was happening, but we didn't have any information to show it. But now we have it all, which is so fascinating to me. Oh, thank you, the outlaw feminist. How are you doing, my friend? It's great to see you. This is from all us moms and dads that stick our necks out to protect the children and women. Love and respect, brother man. Oh, you're so awesome. Love you, friend. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate you all. Seriously. So let me do this. Now, give me a little break here. I'm old. Just kidding. <laughs> I want to bring up this um, I'm going to bring up, I'm going to share the screen here. Hold on one second here. Okay. This is really important. So this is Mia. Hold on one second. Mia, this is Mia Hughes. She's the woman who did all the research. This woman is, we owe this woman a ton. We owe not even her, not only her, but Michael Schellenberg, who's also amazing uh, person. Who's the person who's putting this out here. He's a big journalist. So that being said, we owe Mia a ton. So this is who's going to be speaking right now is Mia. Okay. So Mia, you guys, my head is spinning because there's just so much amazing information. It's crazy. So my head is just like 
<laughs> it's going nuts because I just want to share everything with you. And I know I can't in the small amount of time we have here. So let me bring this back up here. And I want you, I want to set the stage first. So Mia is going to talk to you about, and I took notes so that I can remember. Uh, Mia is going to talk to you about the four medical scandals that have been pre prevalent within the medical space for years. This is it number, this is number five. That's what's scary. The trans kid thing is number five. Okay. So we had four before that. So Mia doing her research went in and it's incredible what this woman did. And she totally found first thing she did is she's going to show us that the medical world is insane. <laughs> first she's going to show us the medical because she's going to show four. Okay of these medical scandals throughout the history of medicine. So watch this, watch this. This is actually, I just love this a lot. Okay, so here, there's that. Okay, so th here we go. Proud of how it turned out. Um, but yeah, the past scandals, they make sense to me. The reason I chose the four that there are, there's lobotomies is the obvious choice. Ovariotomy, which is the the worst medical scandal of the 19th century when um, surgeons were removing healthy ovaries from women to cure their madness, their insanity. Um, apotemnophilia, my favorite, the people who want the, <laughs> the healthy limbs amputated. Wow. And then the hormone, the scandal of treating adolescents, tall girls and short boys with hormones right. to right. correct their height. And so... In my mind, you can combine all four of them. Right. And you've got today's scandal. Wow. So, you know, lobotomies was obviously a terrible, terrible crime, but it was done in a time when they didn't really have all of the treatments. If you were mentally ill back then, all of the treatments were just horrendous. So see how she's showing you? She's showing you how... Here, hold on, I'll move this. Four, four, they, they would give med. there's a thing, the amputee one really blows my mind. And they would cut people's arms and legs off who wanted it done because they just wanted it done. That is insane. We all know about lobotomy. That's been a thing forever. And everyone would just do it like as if it was working. And we clearly found out that it doesn't work. And then what were the other ones? There was what? Oh, the kids. So when kids are growing too tall, what? So they were giving medicine to kids who were growing too tall. At two, maybe they were nine, right? And they were taller than the rest of the kids in the school. So they would give them this medicine to stop their growth. And now going forward, a bunch of these kids have huge medical problems. They're, they're totally destroyed. There's things wrong with their bodies. There's all kinds of stuff happening. And no one would even talk about that. So they, they hit all that. They, they sort of shut it down, right? Like lobotomies, they shut it down real quick. They hit the information and then they just went on and act like, yeah, as if girls aren't allowed to be tall. What? So they're stunting girls' gr growth because that's abnormal for a girl to be tall. So you can lay all of this right on top of puberty blockers for kids. You can literally lay it right on top of there. It's a medical scandal. Because again, in these WPATH files, which I'm not going to be able to show you everything today, you're going to have to do a little of your own research, but I'm going to give you all the spaces to go do this. One of the things that they were saying was, oh no, and we all know this, oh, it's fine. These kids are fine. It's completely reversible. If they choose that they don't want to do it anymore, they just stop taking it and everything goes back to normal, which is a complete lie. And they're caught in their lies. Okay, these doctors have been caught in their lives because there's an actual Zoom meeting where they're all talking about everything you and I talk about here, and they're caught on the Zoom saying everything. We don't know how this is going to affect the kids or that the kids don't really know what they're taught. They actually are saying this. They're saying the kids don't really understand what they're doing, that, yet you're continually doing it? They say it, the doctors, the kids do not understand the long-term effects of this. They effing say it, and then they continue to give the kids the drugs. They are so busted. So 
there's number one I wanted to show you. Okay. The, the number two thing I wanted to show you was um, here. Hold on. Let me, let me key this up for one second here. Take a drink of your uh, coffee. Okay. So I have a couple keyed up. So hold on one second here. This one is also really important. I'm going to show you this. This is a great, I put this, um, by the way, I put this in the links. Okay. So I think if you all want to look at it on your own, you can. Okay. So here, I got it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Hold on one second. Dating all the, the vaginal atrophy and everything, the way they're talking about that. These are the side effects. Again, there's not a single person that shows up to say, oh, maybe giving testosterone to teenage girls isn't such a good idea. Oh, they're my God. Suffering all of these terrible side effects. It's impacting yeah. their lives. Maybe we shouldn't. Should we be doing this? No one says that. And then there's. There's the the erections that feel like broken glass. I'm sure that's not, you know, that much fun. Um, People bleeding after sex. Oh, um, my God. Like inflammatory disease seems to be, be a huge issue. Yeah, and the, it's the lack of, well, the lack of this, this, the it's not science part comes next, but it's the lack of nobody sharing any literature scientific literature to say oh if you have you if go. you see a patient with that you should do this Look there you this. go this is what we should do are, are you getting and i are recall you, there's one in are you getting this I, i'm sure you are but this is insane these are all the things that are happening the side effects of taking uh hormones for a young person right and it's it it's actually there in the literature for WPATH, but they're not sharing it with the rest of the world, right? They're not sharing it. They're they're literally saying pelvitory uh, um, inflammation disease, which I think I got, atrophy, which I got, then for a uh, male to female, it feels as if when they get an erection, it feels like broken glass. And they continue to give the kids the medicine saying it's totally okay. These are just some of the side effects. I mean, how dare an organization? So here, watch this, okay? Hold on one second. Bear with me here. This is very interesting. Okay, hold on. Some people were left in. Watch. Yes, yes. And then I wrote to everyone who was going to be named. Important. In the report, I very, very detailed write of reply emails telling them what they said in the files and what how what I intended to say about it, asking them for comment, and that didn't go down so well. Are you hearing that? Uh, do you want to say that, and then I'm going to read out uh, Marcy Bowers, the president. Uh, uh, wait one uh, second. Statement. Did so 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 <laughs> so Mia wrote too, right? She wrote. She wrote this article, and I'm yes. I'm, who who asked me that? I forgot. I'm gonna put all the links in in the in here. I'm gonna put all the links for you to see everything. Okay, Mia's uh, research, all of it. So that being said, did you hear what 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 she just said? She actually reached out to every single person at WPATH who was like on the board, or, and she asked anybody if they wanted to have a conversation about it or say anything about it before she publishes it. Crickets. Total crickets. Nobody, nobody wanted to say anything. Doesn't that make you wonder about an organization that's being challenged and then nobody from the organization wants to step up and say anything? It was complete total crickets. Okay. So she redacted. This is, I mean, I, I find I find that to be very have and that me I have uh, integrity. She redacted the names, which I think is very that that says a lot to me about her because we don't need the names. We need the organization. Okay. And I do think it's smart of her to do that. No, you're not late. You're never late. You're showing up. So let me now let me show you this. This is so crazy, you guys. It's just crazy. I did. I wrote to everyone and, and I only got one reply and that was with a vaguely worded legal threat. Um, <laughs> a legal everyone threat. Else were, everyone else was actually ordered not to reply to me. The source See? provided Michael with a, a screenshot of the internal communication See? saying don't reply to this journalist. 
So, wow. Yeah, go ahead. Read read yeah. the statement. Listen. No, I listen. Read so um, WPATH President Dr. Marcy Bowers released this statement. WPATH is and has always been a science and evidence-based organization whose recommendations are widely endorsed by major medical organizations around the world. We are the professionals who best know the medical needs of trans and gender diverse individuals and stand opposed to individuals who misrepresent and delegitimize the diverse identities and complex needs of this population what? through scare tactics. The world is not flat. Gender, like genitalia, is represented by diversity. The small percentage of the population that is trans or gender diverse deserves well health care and will what? never be a threat to the global gender binary. <laughs> wow. Did you guys hear that? On Believable. So that was the Marcy Bowers, if you don't know, is the president of WPATH. And she sends something out like that. Again, I'm putting the links here for you all. Don't worry about it. You can go back and look at <laughs> it. Says not. She just totally skipped over everything, did not acknowledge these are facts. What we have today are factual information about an organization that is a grifter organization that is spreading lies, that has no desire to do real medical. And there, it's a scandal. It is a medical scandal. And Marcy Bowers is like, trans people exist, and this is okay. And we don't, we don't, these are all lies. She's saying these are all lies. I hope she goes down. I can't wait for her to be sued and go to prison because she's one of the people doing those disgusting surgeries on young people. She's the one who does Jazz Jennings bottom surgery, by the way. That's who Marcy Bowers is. And she runs W Path. Okay. Think about that. Isn't that sort of, uh, what is it called? A conflict of interest? Isn't that a conflict of interest for Marcy Bowers to be on a television show with a television star, Jazz Jennings, and doing this stuff in front of the camera? Isn't that sort of like unethical on some level? I, I, I really believe it's unethical because she's also being a TV reality star doctor. But at the same time, yeah, I, I believe it's it's not it's not OK to be a, a, a doctor who's also on a reality TV show doing vagioplasties on a 15 year old what so that is very interesting right there her her actual okay her actual response to the dub to the w path files are quite fascinating to me okay so here i got this one uh let's see here this is this is this is um doc um dr uh carrie Mendoza, she works for FAIR. If you're not familiar with FAIR, you should be. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I, I, and I'm a physician. I'd like to just remind everyone that, first Listen. of all, this scandal is in a completely different phase. This is the end phase. It's widely out in the practice of medicine in clinics and in hospitals. So it's not about like theories and it's not That's even right. arguing no, it's facts. so much the different research papers, which I, I know re yeah, research Rose, is important. You know. I'm not minimizing that, but we're talking about medical practice and in the and and what malpractice is and safety standards and the standards and hospitals and how we practice. That's and right. so when she says that you know they know best, that's that's not true. Right. It has zero to do with a patient in front of you and you're charged you're with making a listen. diagnosis and a treatment plan. Um, and if your diagnosis is wrong, um, like that their psychological issues or distress could be treated by um, medicine, but you know, by pills um, or surgeries, well, what? you made the wrong diagnosis, you have the wrong treatment. So you don't know best. So you have See, they're making the wrong diagnoses. Do you understand how insane this is? They're literally diagnosing children with gender dysphoria in 20 minutes, right? And then they're acting as if they are the experts in transgender medicine when they're clearly not. Because let me tell you about transgender medicine. Transgender medicine is new. 
It is still in the experimental stage, which should scare all of you. There is no specific 100% way. The problem that lawsuits, the problem that's happening is they're treating every patient. This is what I want you to see. What, what this doctor is going to tell you right now is very important. Very, very important what she's going to tell you right now. This is so important. Okay, here it goes. It's not addressed. And then diversity of patients, again, what, that, that doesn't mean anything. These are humans. And, diversity. And your job is to make a diagnosis, to treat them, make sure you're not hurting them. That's so, right. Um, what what, what that, she just said is so profound, everybody. I, you have to hear what she, she said, diversity of patients. That's with anything you treat. The patient is not the same as patient one and patient two are two different patients. Even if they're going in for the same problem, they're two different patients, but they're treating all of the pa trans patients the same. And they've been doing this since I started taking testosterone. They, when I started taking testosterone 31 years ago, they had no clue what to give me. They told me that they actually told me, I don't know what I'm doing, dude. So you're really going to be my guinea pig. They said that to me. And that being said, they tried different doses with me. Did you know that they're doing the same thing today? They're doing the exact same thing. But now what they're doing is they're making a one standard shot of testosterone for all trans men. So the, the shot usually is about a one cc or maybe a little bit less. I, I'm not, I, I think it was one cc. And that is given across the board to everyone. And that's why everyone is whacked out because what you give me is not the same as what you sh should give him because we're different. And why you should always start in a low, low dose and then you add to it or subtract from it. But you don't add, you don't start at a high dose and then whack somebody's body out because that's what they're doing to these young girls. They're, they're literally giving them a high dose of testosterone right out the gate, right out the gate. They're slamming them with testosterone, which is wreaking havoc on their female biology. And no one's addressing this. And they're all acting as if we're all the same. And this is the standard of care for trans people. They're, that's not true. And now we're going to expose to you how come this isn't true. So the next thing I want to bring up for you is uh, Michael Schellenberg. So let, should I bring up Michael or should I bring up the website? I'm not. I, there's just so much information here. So here, Michael Schellenberg is the one who started this, and he's a he's genius, brilliant, amazing. Cares about us. He has a beautiful heart. <coughs> Pardon me. He's a sensitive human being. He cares about our universe. He cares about children. He cares about everyone. So the first thing I'm going to bring up, um, hold on here one second. I think I have to get rid of, uh, let me get rid of this. I have to stop sharing that. Okay. Sorry, you guys. Just give me a, <laughs> give this old man a little break here. Okay. So here, and this is the one I'm going to bring up next. Okay. Share. Okay. So this is Michael and he's amazing. And because of him, we're able to have, now I'm going to play the video of why Michael, what Michael is talking about here. Okay. So hold on one second. Let me get back over here. A year and a half ago, a video of gender medicine experts went viral on it. They talked about how hard it is to talk with teenagers about whether they might want to have kids one day. It's always a good theory that you talk about fertility preservation with a 14 year old, but I, I know I'm talking to a blank wall. And the same would happen for a cisgender kid, right? They'd be like, ew, kids, babies, gross. Or, or the usual stock answer is I'm gonna adopt. I'm just gonna adopt. And then you ask them, well, what does that involve? Like, how much does it cost? Oh, I thought you just like went to the orphanage and they gave you a baby. Oh my God. No, it's not quite like that. That's Dr. Daniel Metzger. And he's talking about the challenge of getting what's known as informed consent mm -hmm. from children and adolescents to undergo procedures that will result in their sterilization. Over the last several years, doctors, medical experts, and the media have all said that the best way to help adolescents in distress about their gender is to give them puberty blockers, hormones, and surgeries to align their physical sex with their gender identity. Unbelievable. The alternative to doing so, they said, was suicide. But now a new study released last month found no scientific evidence to support the claim that drugs and surgeries prevent suicide among people with gender dysphoria. 
Uh, I agree. We should be concerned about children and adolescents. An actual study, stress. people, an actual real life study was done on the S word, because I'm not going to say it because I'll get freaked. The YouTube will mess me up. They did an actual real life study, and it's not true that these young people will off themselves if they don't transition. And then they handed it to WPATH, and WPATH threw it in the trash. And WPATH doesn't even want to acknowledge it. They will not acknowledge it in any way, shape, or form. All of us keep coming to WPATH with facts, and they won't even look at that in any way, shape, or form. What they were saying right there was this. They figured out. This, in this internal Zoom link where they're discussing it, they basically say children cannot understand what they are consenting to. It says it right there. You guys are going to freak out. Read it instead of your morning paper. When you're drinking your coffee, read, the, read everything I'm going to give you because it's going to blow your mind. They've known this all along. They've known all along that these medicines don't work. They've known all along that detransitioners are a thing, but they don't want to acknowledge it. It's, it's, I'm going to show you another factual thing here. Let me finish with Michael here for one second, because this is really important. Now there's even more evidence to warrant greater caution in how we treat them. Yeah. Whistleblowers have given me the internal files from the main gender medicine organization, which is known as WPATH and stands for the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. The WPATH files show surgeons, therapists, and activists discussing internally how to treat people with gender distress. What they show is that what's happening is neither good science nor good medicine. Oh my God. There's a discussion, for example, about the blocking of puberty of a 10 year old girl. There's a discussion of doing genital surgery on people with schizophrenia oh. and a dissociative identity disorder, oh. which used to be called multiple personality disorder. At the core of medical ethics is getting this informed consent from the people receiving That's the medicine right. or from their caregivers. The WPATH files show overwhelming evidence that the professionals within WPATH know they're not getting consent from children, adolescents, and Okay, I'm going to put the links to all of this, everybody, so you all can see it and you can read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take Michael's word for it. Don't take anyone's word for it. It's actual factual information that has been put up on the internet. Now, I'm going to do this one thing here. This guy, Benjamin Ryan, is also a, um, he's a journalist. So he did what what I, what I would like to call sort of like, um, <laughs> sort of like W path files for dummies. <laughs> not that you're dummies and not that I'm a dummy, but sometimes reading through all the medical jargon is kind of difficult. But he, what he did for us, which we should thank him, Benjamin, is that he put it in a space of sort of like, like cliff notes, right? So you're going to be able to get it. So I found this, which I find to be extremely important. And so what Benjamin did is this. Hold on one second. Sorry. Let me go back here. You're, you're going to actually. Um, okay. So here we go. Present. Here, I'm going to bring this here. And then um, this. Okay. So I want you to see this. Can you read that? I don't know if you can actually read it. So let me just read a couple of these to you right here. The WPATH files quote WPATH members saying, listen, this is very important. This is what all those people were saying in those Zoom meetings, okay? Number one, gender transition treatment is given to those with a best, uh, with a, at best, a limited capacity to consent. <laughs> Number two, treatment can have serious side effects. Number three, minors often don't understand the long-term risks. Four, detransitioning is conceived of as trivial. Do, do, do you even understand what that means? Those four or five talking points are insane. They actually knew what they were doing. They knew that it wasn't working. They called it trivial. They called detransitioners trivial. We should be so every single one of those people needs to be put in jail. The thing, the, the thing that actually upsets me the most, above and beyond all of this, minors often don't understand the long-term risks of taking the medicine. Can you even believe that? 
He goes on to say, largely U.S.-based WPATH is an interdisciplinary and professional and educational organization that produces influential guidelines for treating gender dysphoria. It's not, being keyword, not a standard medical society like the AMA. Many members are neither physicians or mental health care providers. I mean, can you even believe that? Can you even believe that? Thank you, friend. I appreciate that. I might have missed a couple of you while I was doing this. So let me go back over here because I do appreciate all of you. I appreciate all of you. Thank you, Cubids. Had my best friend tell me that I am trans because I write gay male male on male stories as a bisexual woman. It made me question myself. Don't. You're not. You're not. Don't let people diagnose you all. Don't let people do that. <laughs> you cannot diagnose you. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you, guys. You're really so sweet to me. I do appreciate you so much. Buck, I would love to sit down and have a beer with you. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's smoke a joint. So, so wow, you guys. Wow, wow, wow. If this doesn't in any way, shape, or form get to the left-leaning media, we all need to scream. Why are no, MSNBC, CNN, none of those people are even putting this up? None of them. It's on the news, but it's not even in that space. We should all be very pissed about that. This is real factual information. Now, the last thing I want to bring up, because I don't want to make this whole thing about this is so heavy. Here's what I'm going to bring up. Hold on one sec. I'm becoming an expert at this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I'm going to share this screen here. This is the website that is the most important part of all of this, okay? This is super important. This is the actual website, okay? This is the actual WPATH Files website. The WPATH Files, pseudoscientific surgical, surgical and hormonal experiments on children, adolescents, and vulnerable adults by Mia Hughes, who's a hero, leaked files from WPATH reveal widespread medical malpractice on children and vulnerable adults at Global Transgender Healthcare Authority. Authority. WPATH is the authority, yet they're lying, stealing, and cheating. And they're messing up kids at the expense of what? Why do you think they would do that? I'll link it all. After the live, I'll I'll either have Seth or me will immediately put it uh, on here. In fact, if you'd like, I can um, put the links right here while we're talking, especially this one. Let me let me put this one right here. So, I mean, I just am blown away. I'm blown away. I just can't believe that we're here. It's shocking. It's shocking that nobody is even questioning WPATH. It's shocking to me that we now have, it's greed, 100%, 100%. It's greed. It's totally greed. It, what else can it be, people? What else can it be? Why would you do that? Why would we have to lie about medicine? Thank you, friend. You're awesome. Thank you, Gordon. Why? Why would an organization that is supposed to be professional, that is supposed to be about helping people like me, that is supposed to be loving and caring, that's what medicine is supposed to be about. Medicine is supposed to be about helping people figure out how to live a better life. That's what medicine is. But these people are not doing medicine. They're doing something else. They're doing some creepy, um, what, would it, what would it be? What what are they doing? Experimentation for what? Why would they experiment like this? Is it ego based? Does somebody of a one of the doctors want to become famous for helping create, you know, little girls out of little boys or little boys out of little? I'm wondering what is going on here and how any doctor would even put their name on an organization like that. I'm actually blown away. I don't understand any, really, I do uh, agree with a, a lot of you talking about money. I do, right? Dr. Mangala will be proud. That, that's what I'm wondering. Are they just crazy weirdo humans who became doctors and are now are using their space because it isn't only about money, is it? 
I, I have a really hard time believing that some of these doctors, it's only about money. I think some of these doctors have a big ego and I think that they're trying to do something so like insane that they want to have an acknowledgement of becoming sort of like a, 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 a big deal because they changed the world. That That's sort of what, what I see in that, right? Like, thanks for becoming a member, Gordon. Appreciate you. Thank you, friend. Thank you, friend. Appreciate all you guys so much. So I'm going to put all the links. I'll, I'll, put, I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them, uh, I'll put them up. I'll give them to Seth or I'll just put them up right after this because I want you all to go and just look for yourself. And GenSpec, that's the video I was using is from GenSpec, which is an amazing organization. And if you could subscribe to their channel, it would help a lot because they're doing a lot of great work. And the more subscribers we get them and the more likes we get them, the more they're, they're put out there. And so I'm all about sharing the space. Oh, hey, Lucky Burrito. And you should follow Lucky. They're great people too. So, uh, that was heavy. <laughs> I don't know how you guys feel, but that was heavy shit. I could go on and on. I mean, all morning long, I was like, oh, wow, this is great. I was just like, how am I going to uh, present this in the live today? Because it was literally too much information. My brain was like, what is happening here? And it is, you know, I'm home alone. My my kid is at school and um, I don't know if you all know this. I'm going to tell you something a little bit personal, but I, I, I like you all. So I'm going to share this with you, but the outlaw feminists, you're so great. Oh, you, you just keep throwing stuff at me. You're awesome. The, uh, the, the ego it takes to be a doctor. Of course it is psycho. Yes. You're right. You're right. You're right. Have you ever kicked it with a doc? No, you're right. Oh, you're right. That's all I'm going to say is you're right. <laughs> it's literally ego. So I'm going to, before I move to the, we, we we need to have a little laugh. So I brought some stuff up here, but before I move forward, I just want you to know that um, I, I'm not sure if you all know that um, my family lost a very good friend of ours who was her son was our son's best friend. Sage, thank you, friend. If gender ideology had come from the right, it would have been instantly condemned as one of the most reactionary homophobic. You are so right on, friend. We were talking about that this morning. That is exactly right. That is exactly right. Thank you, friend. So, you know, my my family, we lost a very, very good friend of ours. And her her son is our son's, like, really great friend. They went to, like, nursery school together. And they kind of grew up together. And they just, they're just two awesome little boys. And so when we lost our friend and... um and it was very heavy for us and, and you know and it's i think it's really heavy for a young child to lose their friend but holy moly is it insane when a young kid loses their mother let me tell you i don't know any of you have ever been connected to that but when a young kid loses their mother it, like i will just start crying right now because imagine imagine being nine right and losing your mom and he was so close to his mom. Like they were like two peas in a pod and we would go hiking all together. We would go to the beach together and we would do, and, and she's like a daredevil lady. She's from the Ukraine and she was, she was in the military and she like was in like some crazy, like Antarctic, like military base for a long time. Anyway, what I'm trying to get here at is this, my, my partner is a filmmaker and my partner is making a documentary right now about the death of our friend because it so, just so happens that our friend is the woman who got shot <laughs> who got shot and killed on the Alec Baldwin set and it's been very difficult on many levels to sort of deal with it because now it's in the media and I don't know if any of you are watching it Thank you, Cecilia. Appreciate you so much, nine months. But it is very, very devastating for us. So my wife is now at the trial, and she is watching this whole trial. And I don't know if any of you have been paying attention to it, but it is actually a crap show. And the whole thing is sad. You know, I don't know if there's just one person who's guilty. I do know the armorer has a responsibility, but if you don't know, the armorer was only 24 years old. And the reason I'm using this story in what we're talking about today is what I'm trying to get at here is a 24 year old doesn't even know who they are. 
Okay. A 24 year old on a set of a movie loading weapons and being responsible for something such as loading weapons, which means you are actually in charge of people's lives is very insane, especially somebody who doesn't have very much, very much, um, knowledge. I think this person had only done one or two movies before that. So when our friend Helena got shot, because the set was not locked down like it should be, okay? I've been around movie sets a long time. I've been connected to that energy over there. It's a pretty crazy place if you've never been on a movie set. It can be very... But there's no way that our friend got killed and shot like that. And it's, I still have a hard time believing it, but, but what I, what I think I'm trying to connect here is youth. I'm trying to connect youth to what I'm talking about today. And young people, even at 24, don't even understand what's happening in the world. Do you think a 10 year old can understand about the fact that they're going to be sterilized, that they're never going to be able to go back to who they were originally. Do you actually think that? Because there's no way. And we now know. They even said it in the WPATH files. They show it. They knew that these children do not understand what is going on. When, they, when you tell a child, I can make you into a boy and I can make you into a girl, they have no clue what that means. They actually said it in w path but they never tell us when we're like hold up here wait a minute those kids can't make that choice never never hey lizzie thank you so much have you heard of this weird collection collective dream that non-binary kids are apparently having no it involves a sentiment ma a senate sentient mannequin telling them they have no gender and then they wake up born again the non-binaries at work have been what okay lizzie can you send me or seth that because i'm doing a reaction people have lost their minds we're giving this to young kids we're giving this to young kids people <laughs> what you we're letting them think these insane things it's our fault as adults. I'm not going to blame the young people. I'm not. I'm not going to blame the young people. You have to remember when you're young, if you are giving something and told it was okay, you're going to do it. We're giving kids the opportunity to transition because the adults are saying it's okay. It's Looney Tunes. It's actual, hey, panic button, please follow the panic button. They're really good. They're, they're great. Th these are my, these are some of my favorite leses. Please, hey, you guys, it, it is a cult. They're great. You should follow them. They do great commentary. So, um, Lizzie, you can um, send us an email. Seth, are you in the room? Can you put the email on the thing? If not, the email is, is actually in the um, bio of this, of this, okay? Um, do you guys want to do a couple reactions so we can leave here with less heavy heart and I, and I, and 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 a less heaviness about everything that's just been going on? It's just crazy. <laughs> it's just crazy. I want to. Oh, here's here's the email. Thank thank you, thank you, friend. Here you go. That's the email. If you guys want to send me anything, okay. Um, so let's do a couple of these and then we can move on. Thank you, friend. Okay. I brought these up because they're they're they fascinate me. They actually fascinate me the way people have become. I identify as a man. I was assigned and lived my life as a woman, female, until I was thirty nine. Okay, assigned. If I'm not transitioned. I may not be walking around right now. Happens. And the reason is, is trans people. They're brain chemistry Here. is that of the gender they identify with. No, it isn't. Blutter. I have a man's brain. Neurons firing. What's a man cells. brain? What? Genomes and DNA and genetics and a trans what? woman. They identify as a woman because they have a woman's brain. What? Trans men. <laughs> have men's brains <laughs> neurons firing no and such thing <laughs> that are anywhere in between and outside and yes that it's is a butch lesbian oh my god really 
<laughs> They're saying that our brains are actually man brains. My bra my brain is not a man brain. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. I, I still retain that female brain. <laughs> and let me tell you, I know it because when I get around bio dudes, I have a, just a different way of being. I might look like a bio dude and I might walk the world as a bio dude. And sometimes my jokes are like bio dudes. <laughs> but I'll tell you something right now. I am not a... <laughs> I do not have a man brain. This is the gaslighting nonsense that these people and trans women have a woman brain. What's a woman brain? And what's a man brain? And prove it. You can't just go out there and say shit like that without having backup. You know, it's like as if we can just say, you know, I have actually four legs and a tail and two horns. You just don't see them. They're actually here. You just don't see them. That, that is actual gaslighting. <laughs> the outlaw feminist, thank you, Fred. In the words of my great grandma to man, woman, or child, chin up, it's out. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, friend. So, a man brain. Okay, I'm going to bring this one up now. Apple. That's because I have okay, wait. one. Wait, wait, wait I sorry. Have Harry wait. Oh, honey, of course you see an Adam's apple. That's because I have one. I also <laughs> have hairy armpits and big biceps and. A dick. I'm sorry your insult didn't land, but thanks for giving me the opportunity to platform this point, which is that none what? of those things make me any less feminine. Whether uh, it's feminine or masculine or uh, it's sorry to break the, the news to you. Me, <laughs> by me. I can't define it for anyone else, uh. and neither can you. Which also means you can't insult me by pointing out things that you perceive as masculine. Insult. Oh my god, I love when they say you can't insult me. So then instead of that, they do a whole TikTok about how they can't insult you, how you're not insulting them. You're clearly insulting them because they're actually saying all of that. It's like when you, it's like that other dude, James, who says, I don't need your validation. And then he goes on to do like an hour video about how much of a woman he is. But I don't need your validation. <laughs> Better luck next time, I guess. <laughs> nope. Dude, you're a dude. Get over yourself. You look like a dude. You have a gnarly Adam's apple. There's hardly any women I know that. Some women might have an Adam's apple, but it's a dead giveaway. Your muscles are a dead giveaway. Your voice is a dead giveaway. Your five o'clock shadow is a dead giveaway. You're, no, you're not feminine in any way, shape, or form, my friend. So yeah, <laughs> your Adam's apple is showing. I don't care. These people, I'm so happy about the WPATH files, everybody. I am so happy. It is going to get rid of all of these losers and all of these grifters and all of these fake trans people. These are just fetishy, fetishy dudes. That's all. They just want to get in women's spaces. They think by putting on a, a, a thing and some makeup, they can just crawl into the women's restroom because women, trans women are women. No, nope, we got you. We see you. No, no, no. No more of this creepy crawling into the women's room because you're a woman and then you're going to whip out your penis so that all the other women can say, I have a lady penis. No, there's no such thing as a lady penis. Just so you know, there just isn't. You can call it whatever you want, but in reality, it doesn't exist. It is not a lady penis. It's a penis. Passing is entirely necessary for some of us to live the lives that feel most authentic to us. That's right. We are on different journeys, and that is okay. Oh, absolutely. 100%. Ugh. And because of the things that I've said about passing, I want to take this moment to absolutely affirm you <laughs> and any trans woman anywhere. Thank you. Passing is entirely necessary oh, who for is some this? people. Who's this dude? Now he's going to affirm everybody? Are you Jesus? Because <laughs> I can tell. Oh, are you the trans Jesus? Because he has the trans flag behind there. Looking just like Jesus. And then telling everybody, I'm going to affirm you. Who are you to affirm? You don't need to affirm me. Like, are you out of your mind, dude? Like, oh my God, these people. And let, I'm going to tell you guys something real quick here. Cecilia, thank you, my beautiful friend. Um, well, I'll read it after this because I'm I it blocked it. So here, hold on. This is so funny. People to live their authentic lives. For some people, their identity is not in the transness. What? It's just being a woman. Lord of the Rings. Just being an authentic <laughs> woman and getting to live oh, her oh, life. Oh yeah. In tell peace. us, dude. Tell us. Just be tell us, Mister, how we have how, how tell. Let the man tell us how to be a woman. This is the thing that is so upsetting. 
How dare you as a dude, because you're a dude. I don't care how you identify. You're a dude. And now you're telling women how women are. This is the part all of you people out there need to hear. Stop telling women who they are. You are not a woman. Okay? You'll never be a woman. I'll never be a man. You might, and you also don't even look like one, just so you know. So whatever. Being a man and getting to live his life authentically in peace. And I just want to say that that is absolutely fair. Absolutely appropriate. Okay, Barfy. Just Barfy. You're Barfy. Oh my God. I want my money back from my all biochem. There you go. Classes I took to get my ch ch bio degree since those people have all the answers. <laughs> you should actually do that, friend. You should go back to your school <laughs> and actually tell them I'm not paying. I'm not paying. Give me back all my money. That is actually a brilliant comment. Thank you, friend. But so those I brought up because there's this idea about passing and that when we try to pass, we're trying to be heteronormative. Okay. Okay. You're right. I am trying to be heteronormative. Why? Because I want you to see me as a man. Why? Because I have something called gender dysphoria. Why? I don't know. It's in my brain. It's a, it's a disorder. I have no idea why. All I know is it fixed it on some level when I look like a dude. It's real basic. So these weirdos who are looking like dudes and acting like they're women and telling all women how to be, they can go F themselves because the W path files are out and these people are now being seen. So with that, everybody, we got it. All of our hard work is going to pay off. Everything we've all been saying, all of this nonsense about kids, it's about to be exposed. Push all of your local media, I'm not kidding, if any of you have a connection to your local media, if any of you have any kind of connection to journalism, especially on the left, I highly, highly recommend sending all of this to them and saying, why are you not reporting on this? Because it's actually bad journalism that not everybody is exposing WPATH and their lies and deceit. And the only way we get these particular files to the world is by us all participating. We can't hang this on Michael and Mia and 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 Jen Speck and we have to participate in this. Okay? That's why this live was very important for me today. Not like all the lives are, they all are, but this one specifically will now sit here live and I'll put all the links and if if that's all you need to do is send this to somebody, I would love you forever if you did that. And not because of the channel, but because of the information and because people will start to see, oh, whoa, I had no idea. I thought WPATH was this totally amazing organization that was all about saving kids. Now we got them. So the more of us that participate in exposing this nonsense, the more children we save and the less detransitioners we have. And if you need a reminder, after this live, I have a brand new interview going up with Jade, who's a detransitioned young lady, who's a girl who at the age of 11 went on the goddamn internet and got sucked into transitioning, okay? And about three years later, she detransitioned and the whole community tried to wipe her out. So I'm going to tell you, if you need a refresher course and seeing the damage that WPATH has done to young people, watch the interview coming up. It will make you cry. It's a longer interview than the majority of them, only because this young lady gives so much information and this young lady is hurting. And this young lady needs our support because she's continually being bullied on the internet by crazy weirdo people who call themselves trans. We need to support these young people, especially these young ladies, because that's all they are. They're just young ladies who found somehow felt lost in their bodies, somehow had some weird stuff going on, which most young girls do. We all know that. I was a young girl. I know. It's not easy going through puberty. And I, I don't know about males, and I can't speak to that. But I do know about young girls and the sexualization and all of the stuff that happens when you're a young lady. How convenient. How convenient for the internet to be there for these, these poor young girls who are struggling and to tell them that they're not really girls, that they're really boys. How convenient of them 
to use all of these young girls to make their point. And they all know that those detransitioners are collateral damage and they do not care. That should be your total desire to get this information to the world. Okay? I totally, totally care about all of you. I care about everything that's going on in the world. Don't think I'm one-sided on anything. I'm not. I guess the only thing I'm one-sided on is truth. It's the only thing I care about. And I don't understand how we got into a world in a space where lies are now considered truth and how truth gets literally taken off the internet and how me and you get our voices shut down because all we want is truth. And all I care about is kids. And all I care about is these kids having a healthy, beautiful future and life. And they will never have that if they start to transition at the age of 10. And by the way, there's no such thing as trans kids, okay? Number one. Number two, there's no such thing as a family with four trans kids. Should I do a reaction on that one? I, I think my next reaction will be trans kids. That That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find a bunch of crap to do that too, okay? Have a beautiful day. Stay in the truth. Keep speaking your mind. Do not let people gaslight you. Do not let people shut your voice down. You have every right to say, feel, and be whoever you want to be. And by doing that, we create a better world. And together, we get back to a space where we are allowed to have different opinions. But the number one point for all of us is our democracy. Our democracy counts for me, and it should count for you. But today, it's being destroyed by disingenuous, lying, freaky, weirdo people who only care about money. That's all they care about, money and this desire to be famous, okay? I'll see you guys all on the next one. Stay safe, be good people, and the world will be good to you.